Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. It's been a little while since I did my last devlog and that is because I was quite busy with finishing up the game and I also entered a podcast for an interview and I also published a live version of a new song with my band so yeah feel free to check any of those out. What I'm going to be showing you today is what I improved to the game. Starting out I fixed the Warlock Orb and this was quite a puzzle so I'm going to be going over that more in depth later. I also added two orbs. I did a bunch of balance changes to the waves of the levels and I re-added the bridge level. Furthermore I added sound effects sent by Oliver Smith. He is the sound effects designer for this game. And also Andrea, a fellow game developer friend of mine. He made very cool fan art for Arcade Wizard. So I asked him if he was interested in a skill exchange. So I'm going to be making music for his game. And he did the intro story and outro story for my game. So yeah, I'm going to be showing off those first. So yeah, if we head over to Unity, here you can see the new story for Arcade Wizard. This is the artwork by Andrea. I changed it up a little bit because in the past there was a scrolling text. But now we have this slideshow and um, yeah, it features this artwork. So if I click next, you can see all the images. And I'm really happy with this. I think this image in particular looks really epic. Also, I think this image should be on a t-shirt. Andrea wants a, a percentage of the revenue, but yeah, I think it's worth it. What do you guys think? Uh, please leave a comment in the comment section. Uh, should this be on a t-shirt or not? Anyway, moving on, we have a bunch of new orb types to discuss. As you can see here, we have the orb of the assassin which is a new one. And we have the Orb of the Sniper, which is also a new one. The Necromancer Orb and Vampire Orb, we are just going to ignore those for now. But yeah, let's focus on the Sniper. So this Orb features a very long range, but also a very narrow hitbox. So as you can see, it's for uh, precision, so you can reach mobs from really far away. But yeah, if you're stuck in, in like a huge clump of mobs, then it won't really help you because, well, it doesn't have that wide of a range, so it, it's not much of a get off me orb. But yeah, I think it's really good for if you want to kite. I based the design a little bit on a cat eye, because I thought, well, cats have really good vision. So I thought it was really fitting for an orb which uh, requires a lot of precision. So yeah, that's the orb of the sniper. Moving on to the next orb, we have the orb of the assassin. It does a bunch of damage, so it does four times the usual amount of damage. But it also has a really short range, so as you can see it leaves this really small dust cloud and that's the range of the orb. But it does four times damage, so you can basically one-shot enemies that would usually take four hits or less. If you increase the orb range on any of these orbs, then the range of the attack will increase a little bit. So for instance this orb will have a slightly bigger cloud. So it's not this small the entire game, but yeah I think it adds a lot of variation. So yeah, now we've reached the main puzzle of the week, and that is the Orb of the Warlock. A lot of you mentioned that it didn't work as expected. So first I will have to explain what the effect of the Orb is. The idea is that it deals 50% damage on the initial hit, and then it deals 100% of the original damage over time, netting a 150% damage. So how it used to work is that it did the first 50% as advertised on the initial hit, but then it would deal one damage over time in ticks with a fixed amount of time between them. So let's look at an example. Let's say we have a power level of 8, then the initial hit would be 50% of that 8, so it would make 4, and then it would deal 8 damage over time. This 8 damage would be dealt in one damage at a time, uh, with a fixed amount of time in between. I think it was half a second. So in this example it wouldn't be too much of a problem because in a couple of seconds you would do all your damage. But let's say we have a different power level, a power level of 100. Well then the orb would deal 50 damage on the initial hit, but then it would take a hundred ticks with half a second in between each tick to deal the remaining hundred damage. So that would take quite long, it would take 50 seconds. This would make the orb feel completely useless because the mobs were probably dead by the 50% blows long before the 50 seconds expire. So yeah, this is why I thought a different solution was required for this. So what I wanted to do was I want to spread out the damage over a fixed length of time. So for instance, I want to deal the damage in 5 ticks with 0.2 seconds in between. So in 1 second the damage over time would be dealt. A problem then occurred because all health in the game is measured uh, by integers. An integer is a whole number. This is to keep things simple because imagine uh, the health bar would say 3.141592 etc etc out of 4. Well that would just be weird. So then I thought well I'm going to have to distribute the integer over 
and pieces. So let's say the player has a power level of 7. How would I distribute uh, 7 damage over 5 ticks? I can't just do 7 divided by 5 because that would result in 1.4. I cannot deal 1.4 damage because it has to be a whole number. So I came up with this simple solution. I can distribute the biggest possible amount first. So in this example it would be 1. And then I can smear out the remaining 2 over the remaining ticks. So in this example the damage distribution would be this. It would deal 2 damage, 2 damage and then 1, 1, 1. So here's the script I made for it. I call it the integer chopper. And if you're wondering why new instances of this object are being created in these methods, it's just because of the syntactic sugar. So what you can do at the consumer side is you can do integer chopper dot chop seven into five, for instance. So yeah, when the integer chopper was done, uh, all I had to do was implement it into the game. And bimity bam bam, we have a working damage over time. I was pretty happy with the result. I think the damage over time is quite visible now because you can clearly see the health bar go down for a little while. So yeah, that was the puzzle I faced this week. I wanted to go into it more in depth because I thought it could be interesting. But yeah, please let me know in the comments if you like this sort of explanation for what I do. Anyway, that's about it for this video. From now on, I think I won't be adding too much features for a while because I will be focusing on finishing up the game. So I will be focusing on the mobile port, getting some methods of generating revenue in and stuff like that. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please leave a like. And if you want to stay updated, then please subscribe to the channel. For now, I want to thank you all for watching and I hope to see you next week.